defense against uh, uh, Felix, and then Paul appeals to Caesar. And so I want to begin reading in verse number 23, but first, Justin has a song we're going to share. And let's give Justin a, a big hand. He makes a big sacrifice for bringing this guitar. Anything. Okay. Anything. Yeah. You guys could help me out on this one. in Caesarea. <laughs> Is that awesome? I'm going to read it, and it's a, a pretty long piece of scripture here, but it's so fitting for us to sit here in this amphitheater. It says, I'm in Acts chapter 25, verse 22. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear this man myself tomorrow. And he said, you shall hear him. So the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come, out, come in with great pomp and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city, Festus was commanded to be brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all these men who are here present with us, 
You see this man about whole, whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me, both at Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not to fit any longer. But when I had found that he had committed nothing worthy of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have nothing certain to write my Lord concerning him. Therefore, I brought him out before you and especially before you, King Agrippa, so after the examination has taken place, I may have something to write. For it seemed to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not specify the charge against him. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. And again, when you think of the might of the Roman Empire, and just imagine all kinds of military soldiers and flags and all the prominent people and the rich and the influential. And then you've got the Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul said this, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you the things concerning which I am accused by the Jews. And especially because you are an expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. My manner of life and my youth, which was spent from my beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first if they were willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judge for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise our twelve tribes earnestly desiring to serve God night and day hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And this I did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison. And having received the authority from the chief priests when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. And while thus occupied, as I journeyed toward Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests, at midday, O king, along with the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And so I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I've appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and witness both of the things which I will yet reveal to you. And I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and the power of Satan to God that they might receive the forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision but declared first to those in Damascus and Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea, then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do the works befitting repentance. For these reasons the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand witnessing to both small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophet and Moses said would come that the Christ would suffer, that he'd be the first to rise from the dead, that he would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now, as he thus made his defense, Festus said in a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself and your much learning is driving you mad. But he said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but I speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before whom I also speak freely knows all these things, for I am convinced that none of these things escape his attention since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, and I love this, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. 
And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also to all who hear me today might become almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. And when he had said these things, the king stood up, as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with him. And when they had gone aside, they talked among themselves, saying, This man has done nothing worthy of deserving chains and death. So isn't it awesome that we get to be here in Caesarea, exactly where this took place in this city of Caesarea. You almost persuade me to become a Christian. And unfortunately, they did not receive that invitation at that time. BJ, you want to pray for us? Yeah. Dear Lord, uh, we thank you that we've accepted that invitation, Lord, to know you. And so, Father, we just thank you once again for this. Lord, we just pray for the rest of the day. And Lord, just be a tremendous blessing, Lord. And uh, once again, we just so blessed to be able to be here. Amen. Amen.